Hey, thanks for dropping by for my message on Monday. And this is Monday, the 22nd day of May, 2023. And um, this is a message that I'm, I'm I'm working through the Gospel of Mark, doing putting these out on Monday. And then we're going to look at Mark 2, 13 through 17 today. And I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. And I hope you'll uh, give me thumbs up and make comments. Those things help the al algorithm get it moving out to more people so more people can be touched. And uh, about half of the people that listen to my videos are subscribed. So I hope you'll subscribe. That helps. And I want to want to talk real briefly about a, a, another ministry I'm trying to work through my little channel. You have a serious prayer need, put it in the comments. And if you put it in the comments, a serious prayer need, I'll do a prayer video for you and try to get hundreds of people praying for your need. Okay. It's a ministry. And uh, that's how I want to see this. I want to provide the ministry of teaching the word and a ministry of prayer. So I hope you'll do that. And I'll put that video out for you. And it'll be short. There'll be a short video. I call them a prayer moment, but we're going to get people. I, I put a couple of those out that I had like 400 people praying for people and some people been healed. Okay. So uh, we want to offer that as uh, as ministry because I'm a pastor and I care about people. I care about ministering to people with the word and, and with prayer. Uh, let's pray and ask God to use this message. Father, take this message that I call deplorables, Mark 2, 13 through 17, and touch lies with it, God. Touch lies. Use my channel to do that more and more. And I pray that you'd speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. What do you think of deplorables? That is, people who are shockingly bad and deserving of condemnation, deplorables. So how do you suppose Jesus felt about deplorables? We're gonna find out about how, how he, we're gonna find out how he felt about them uh, in this message. Jesus taught, healed, and in memorable fashion, healed a paralytic, at the home of Peter in in um, in the, at the Sea of Galilee port town of Capernaum, and and then Jesus went out by the lake, and a large crowd gathered, and he started teaching all these people. You know, one of the main things Jesus was he was a teacher. He taught them the truth of God. As Jesus walked along teaching, he saw a guy named Levi sitting at the tax collector's booth. Now. Jesus told Levi to follow him. Follow me, said Jesus to Levi. You know what he did? He got up, he left his tax collecting business, and he followed Jesus, and that changed the rest of his life, okay? A road that went through Capernaum ran from Damascus to the Mediterranean coast, and it was heavily traveled. This is a really heavily traveled road. Roman tax collectors like Levi would set up a business on busy roads like this and collect taxes, duties, and other things from people as they passed by. They were collecting taxes for Rome. And it was a business that they bought. They were enterprising businessmen. Now, Levi was a Jewish guy, and he's running a tax business that taxed his Jewish brothers and sisters to fund the Roman government. Tax collectors like Levi took a portion of the money they collected it collected and kept it as a commission for themselves. And they became wealthy people. That's what was going on here. So he probably bought this business and the business was lucrative, made him a rich man, made him a very rich man. But he was taking money from his people to support the oppression that they lived with from the Roman government. And so you have to ask yourself, gee, I wonder how the Jewish folks felt about another Jewish guy collecting taxes for Rome to control them at, at the expense of their freedom and at their, the expense of the money that they earned, the, the money that they earned, earned with their sweat labor. Not good, not good. The Jews hated tax collectors. They saw them as traitors and sinners, deplorables, okay? Being a tax collector for Rome branded a Jewish guy a traitor, sinner, scoundrel, and in short, a, just a nasty deplorable. Let's look at Mark 2, verses 13 and 14. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach. 
As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him. Levi got up and followed him. Jesus called a hated tax collector a deplorable. He called a deplorable. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. To be a sinner means that we are shockingly bad in quality and deserve condemnation. That's what it means, okay? We are all deplorables because we are all sinners. That is, people who fall short of God's glory and deserve condemnation. That's what it means to be a sinner. We're all a sinner. And you know what? Most of us can still prove it from time to time. The only kind of person Jesus has to call to follow him are deplorables. Guess where Jesus goes next? He goes to the home of Levi for a dinner. Now, Levi walked away from his tax collecting business, from his source of riches, and he goes to his home and he throws a dinner for his tax collector and sinner type pals, and he has Jesus over as the guest of honor. What's going on here? Well, Levi is introducing his friends to Jesus. His friends are people like him. They're tax collectors and they're sinners. Jesus is networking through Levi, a deplorable, to get to more deplorables. That's what he's doing. Mark 2, verse 15. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there, they were, there were many who followed him. These folks were becoming followers of Jesus. That's why he showed up, you know. And that's what he wants to happen today. Notice the result of Jesus eating with all the deplorables at Levi's house. Many of those deplorables decided to follow Jesus. That's why he was hanging out with them. And he wants that kind of thing to happen today. Here's a key to Jesus' strategy. He's using a recent convert, a deplorable, to make contact with other people like him, more deplorables, so he can call more deplorables. And he still wants to do that today. Jesus uses the deplorable tax collector to call more deplorables to follow him. Today, nothing's changed. Jesus still wants to use the recent convert, the most recent deplorable to, to, to come in. He wants to use that person to call more deplorables to follow Jesus. He wants that and he wants that desperately. Why is that? Well, who knows the deplorables best, okay? The deplorable who just came in. He still knows all the people on the outside and now he's on the inside and he wants to try to connect them with Jesus so they can come on the inside and not be outside deplorables anymore. What happens next? Well, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees saw Jesus eating with the tax collectors and sinners. And so the teachers of the law and the Pharisees asked Jesus' disciples, why is he eating with tax collectors and sinners? See, the religious guys want to know how the rabbi, how Jesus could be associating with deplorables. How could that be? The religious guy's sensibilities are offended because the rabbi's hanging out with tax collectors and sinners. He's, he's eating with deplorables and they're shocked. They're just shocked. Jesus responds in verse 17. On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come, call, come to call the righteous, but the sinners. The religious guys objected to Jesus hanging out with the deplorables. Jesus is talking to the religious big shots of his day, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And when Jesus says that the healthy don't need a doctor, he is lumping the religious big shots in with the healthy. He's saying, you guys figure you're healthy. You don't need a doctor, okay? When he says that he did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners, he's lumping the religious big shots in with the righteous. You guys figure you're righteous. You don't need me, you know? You don't need the doctor. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees did not see themselves in with the deplorables. They saw themselves as above the deplorables. They were, were religiously squared away. They didn't need a doctor. They needed no help as a sinner. They, were, they, they didn't see themselves as deplorables. They thought they were above the need of Jesus, the sin doctor, and Jesus, the Savior because they kept the law 
and they were religious big shots. They weren't the deplorables anymore. They figured they were better than that. I like to call them, they figured they were spiritual giants. That's what they figured. It's very easy to become a religious guy and not, not see yourself as a deplorable. And it's real easy to get plugged into churchianity, not Christianity. You're just doing the church thing. Oh, I've got it squared away. I'm a religious guy. No, you need to get way beyond that. Usually, when a person first comes to Christ, they know a lot of people, guess what, who are not saved. They know lots of deplorables because they've been a part of them for years. Once you've been in for a while, you don't. You get kind of tangled up with the church. You don't know all the lost people anymore. You just don't save people. After year one, being in, they know less deplorables. After year two, they know less yet until about year five when they might not know anybody who's not a part of their Christian group. They may not see themselves as a deplorable and may not know anyone who we might define as a deplorable. That's what happens when you're in for a while. About five years, that starts to happen to you. Early in their walk with Christ, when they know lots of deplorables, they can reach them like Levi did and reach, reach some of them for Christ. But about five years in, they take on more of the characteristic of the religious dudes who don't see themselves as a deplorable anymore. What happens then? Well, they reach the point where they can't reach deplorables because they see themselves as different than the deplorables. They become religious dudes. Folks, I want to always see myself as a deplorable so God can use me to reach out to more deplorables. Always. 1975 to 78, I was a youth pastor at the Lawndale Christian Church in Lawndale, California. Church has been closed for over 20 years now, which is sad. But I had eight high school uh, high school campuses represented in my, my uh, youth group. Uh, we did an outreach after football games during football season. And, and I called it Football Follies. And we would have entertainment and food at a church hall down at the church. And kids from high schools, from all those high schools, would bring their friends. That Sometimes we'd have 80, 90 kids down there after football games. One of our guys, and I love this guy, just great dude, great guy, played football for the high school closest to us. His name was James. He was a starting offensive guard. Popular guy on campus. People loved him. You know, he's a really popular guy. But if anyone ever knew and understood that he was in need of the Dr. Jesus and Jesus the Savior, it was James. Saw himself as a deplorable. He understood this. That is, he saw himself as a sinner in need of Jesus the Savior. He got it. Not everybody does. One night after a football game, he came in, and I am not kidding you, with about 20 kids from his campus with him. And you know what? Over the next few months, most of those kids came to Christ. That is what I call the Levi effect. A deplorable hanging out with more deplorables so Jesus can call them to follow him. Part of what the church needs today is a lot of that kind of action going on so that there could be authentic revival and evangelism happening. In the early 1980s, uh, from 1980 to 1992, I was pastor of the Christian Church of Lemon Grove, California. It's down on the east end of San Diego. And a guy was coming to church who was dating a, dating a girl that went to our church. This dude owned a bar in town. It was called the, the Pelican Pub. And the Pelican Pub was a notorious biker Bar. It was a grungy, tough place. In fact, the president of the Hells Angels was shotgunned to death in the Pelican Pub in 1979. And I contacted this man's coming to church, filled out a register card for a, for a visitor. So I called this guy, told him I wanted to meet with him. Told him I wanted to share how he could come to know Jesus Christ in a personal way. And he said that he, he wanted to do that, but he'd be working. And, uh, and, I, and I said, maybe I can get, to, get together with you on Saturday. He said, well, I'll be working. I have to run the bar on Saturday. I, I said, well, I come down on Saturday morning. He said, well, the only way I can meet with you is to meet at the bar. I said, I'll come and meet you at the bar, you know. And so we uh, study the, what's, go down to his bar, the Pelican Pub, and study the gospel with him. And so we set the appointment up. 
I was going to go down to the Pelican Bub about 10 in the morning on Saturday and study the gospel with the dude. So I, I, I covered myself. I contacted the chairman of our elders. I told him what I was doing. And I told him, you know, I'm going to the Pelican Pub to study the gospel with the guy who owns it. He's been coming to church. And if anyone sees me going in there, you know that you know why I'm going in there to share, to share the gospel with this guy. He said, that's fine. I got you covered, you know. So about an hour before I was supposed to go down there and meet with the guy, I think he, th I think he thought I'd back out or something. But I, I call, he called and he changed the location to his home. And I met with him at his home and led him to the Lord. He came to Christ. Uh, folks, see, I see myself as a deplorable, never religious big shot. And I always want to reach out to people, connect with them so that they can. I want to connect with more deplorables so they can know Jesus. It's the only way God can use you to reach deplorables. That's how you have to see yourself. And it's how I see myself. It's what Jesus, listen, it's what Jesus would be doing if he was here. You know what he'd be doing? He'd be hanging out with sinners. And and sinners aren't typically at church. <laughs> he wasn't into churchianity, folks. He was into Christianity, which means he'd be trying to impact people's lives. What happened to Levi, okay, our deplorable? Well, he became an apostle of Jesus, one of the 12. His apostolic name was Matthew. Yes, he wrote the gospel that bears his name. And God has used that gospel since around AD 85, around 1937 years to bring millions of people to Christ, millions of people. God used Matthew, a deplorable, to reach millions of deplorables. See yourself as a deplorable so God can use you the same way. That's how I see myself. Hope you'll join me in that. See yourself as a deplorable so God can use you to reach deplorables. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us through the Gospel of Mark. God, change our lives so that we can see ourselves as sinners in need of a Savior, deplorables, so we can touch more deplorables with the good news about Jesus. For I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Bless you. Have a great day.